Welcome back to Hampton Downs for the VIP Pet Foods Endurance uh, Race. Over 12 hours, first time a race of this duration has been attempted in New Zealand for a very long time. Let's give you an update. Tony Quinn, Clark Quinn and Stefan Webling leading in the car number 29. Second is Andre Heimgartner and Phil Hood. Two Porsches at the front of the field. Make it three because Malcolm Nile and Brent Nile and Clint Harvey are third. And then it's the New Zealanders, Scott and Lindsay O'Donnell. This is the race leader, though. This is Tony Quinn at the wheel of the VIP Pet Foods at 997 RSR. Well, we saw in that previous interview with um, car number 97 that the car 30 was in the garage. That was Sam Berry and AJ Lauder. So they're back out onto the racetrack now. And that's where you've got a heap, a plenty of praise on the, uh, the support crews, the mechanics in these cars, just to get them going again in double quick time. These guys haven't need to use their mechanics yet because they've had a trouble-free run thus far. This is Tony Quinn. Clark Quinn did an excellent first stint. And the New Zealander Stefan Webling making up the third of the driver combinations in the VIP Pet Foods Porsche. Lindsay O'Donnell and Scott O'Donnell currently sitting in uh, fourth place. But it's the Australians calling the shots as we work through lap 162 here. Of what is rumoured to be around about 400 laps. So. Plenty of time for lots to happen here at Hampton Downs. Plenty of time to question the reliability of the cars, the reliability of the drivers. The good news is that the um, Mitsubishi Evo of Richard Granger, Kevin Galley and Mike Tor back out onto the circuit after a cracked exhaust manifold put them in the pits, having a door handle to door handle battle at the moment with Steve Taylor, Bernie Verrett and Dave Silverton. certainly would have been an advantage in the early going of this race, certainly under wet conditions, but now the sun is shining. It's a little bit chilly at Hampton Downs, and that's probably good news for the engines on some of these cars. This is number 66. He carries one of our uh, onboard cameras, Bruce Stewart, Andrew Buist, and Matthew O'Donnell in the Beamer. Another car that's built its reputation worldwide through endurance racing looking to add to that reputation here at Hampton Downs. Well, qualifying yesterday pulled a few surprises and uh, some late night repairs for a lot of the teams so really spare a thought for the support behind this amazing event. And I guess we've got a spare a thought for the flag masters out there for a whole 12 hours. I guess it's just another day racing for them, but they do such a fantastic job at all forms of motorsport. You're on board here with Bruce Stewart in the BMW. Every time he's coming to turn one, the tyres have howled in protest, and you hear it again from our effects mic in the car. Bruce currently sitting in uh, 12th position. It's a good result for him up through this turns two and three combination up and over the top and now down heading into the Austin's corner a little more strife here for the 33 by the look of it Stu Taylor in the auto link car coming in and pit crew ready to go to work and you see the mats that come down, that's to catch any drops. There's not allowed to be drops of fuel there. You see Graham Mortensen just wandering over to have a look at the uh, drama on the uh, racetrack. And that is the race leader with the headlights on and stopped. Tony Quinn has come to a grinding halt here at Hampton Downs, the race leader of the 12 hour. And can you believe it? He's got the Porsche going, going again. He's going. Well, the race leader is going. We go back to the pitch for an update from Roger. Well, a standard pit stop here for the Steve Taylor entry, the Honda. Integra and these guys have been going very well indeed. They're currently about six overall when they bought the car into the pits and they're leaders of Group C. So uh, putting a bit of fuel in the back of the car and this car's been out on the racetrack for quite some time and of course taking advantage of the safety car as well. So uh, they're going pretty good at the moment. So safety car out as you heard Roger mention and just looking to pick up the race leader and they've decided to come into the pits as well. Remember, they had a healthy lead. The car stopped on the uh, entrance to the uphill section on the front straight here at Hampton Downs. 
And that, I'm sure, has caused a few more grey hairs for Tony Quinn. Also coming into the pits is uh, Malcolm Nile, Brett Nile, and also Clint Harvey from Australia. So the Aussies in pit lane at the moment. Well, wouldn't you like to be a fly on the wall in the uh, VIP Pet Foods pit garage just to see what the conversation is going on at the moment? The Australian combination uh, peels off and goes to their garage. No real anxiety in the pit crews. Well, the car is running. They're just going to make some checks by the look of it. An anxious moment, certainly when the car stopped out on the racetrack for Tony Quinn. Just coming off after your first stint, you went out leading the race, you're still comfortably in front. Yeah, I, that's what we would kind of expect, I think. Just had a bit of a problem down there on one of the laps. The, um, I don't know, the fuel pump or something just just went off, I think, and then I just switched it off and on again. I tried everything. I think it was just the fuel pump. Just had enough, I suppose. But it seems to be working yeah, now. it's going good now. I think they, they sometimes do that, eh? They sometimes just go stop for a minute. It was a bit of excitement anyway, wasn't it? Well, it certainly was a bit of excitement there, not only for us, but also for Tony Quinn. This is car number uh, 68, Dennis Roderick, Dave Glasson and Aaron Harris. Aaron Harris, as I said, been racing in the uh, Castrol BMW Open Series. Dave Glasson, a stalwart from Wellington, raced in the old Wellington Street races. We go back to the Australian pairing of Malcolm and Brett Nile, Clint Harvey. Currently sitting in third place, it's still the New Zealanders splitting the Aussie uh, combinations at the moment. That's Andre Heimgartner and Phil Hood. Ah, 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 trying to get around the uh, O'Donnell pairing and managing to do so. Lindsay O'Donnell was sitting in uh, fourth place. And that beautiful Porsche. So Porsche's calling the shots here at Hampton Downs. He's currently sitting in the first uh, four positions anyway. Lisa Goodwin's just about to be rounded up by Andre Heimgartner and the Phil Hood Motorsport Services Porsche, car number 67. They've had their issues as well, but uh, well and truly behind them now, that was in the early going. So obviously the alternator not giving uh, any more problems to 777, Lindsay and Dave Goodwin. So as I said, the car number 67, a road car. Essentially, all the team have done is put a roll cage in it and put some uh, wider wheels on it. Maybe a larger fuel tank for the endurance spec. And as we've come to expect from Porsche Reliability, just ticking off the laps. No problems at all. But like a Timex, takes a licking but keeps on ticking. Well, this car has taken a licking. Sam Barry, AJ Lauder, Brad Lauder and Glenn Collinson. Back out after a fairly lengthy stay in the garage. little 1600cc Toyota doing the job. A better auto parts sponsored machine. A bit of a tiger on their tail at the moment because there is the race leader. And there's the speed difference we talked about. Well, maybe I've put the commentator's curse on the O'Donnells because they're back in the pits now. And this one looks a little bit more serious. Lindsay, we've just gone over the six hour mark and uh, you bought the Porsche in here and looks like it's come to a standstill. Yeah, all was going really well, but the clutch has just given out, so we've just gone through and you know, can't do anything about it. Too, too much delay, so we're out. Yep. It would be a major to, to pull the clutch out on one of these cars. Yeah, yeah, we haven't got enough time left in the race to warrant it really. Yeah, so it's okay. We did the best we could. <laughs> Lap 298 now, and I can tell you that the uh, the story is the same. It's still the VIP Pet Foods Porsche 997 RSR of Tony Quinn, Clark Quinn, and Stefan Webling out in the front. 
In second place, it is Andre Heimgartner and Phil Hood. And in third place, it'll be Malcolm Nile, Brett Nile, and uh, Clint Harvey. Stefan Webling at the wheel now of the VIP Pet Foods Porsche. Got the call up to be the third driver of this Australian combination. Stefan better known for his exploits in uh, open wheel racing, the Toyota Racing Series and the Formula Fords. Finished second in this past season. Steve Taylor's got the 33 back out onto the track, along with Bernard Verrett and Dave Silverton. Back on board with the race leader, though. Coming out of uh, barrel 51, the hairpin here at Hampton Downs. Well, I mentioned before, Stefan Webling, no stranger to endurance racing. They... Uh, had a motorsport services Porsche in the Altherm three-hour race as well, but unfortunately succumbed to mechanical issues. That time he paired with Andre Heimgartner. Today, Heimgartner, Andre the Giant to his friends, the current Formula Ford champion of New Zealand, is in the 67 car along with Phil Hood, so they're rivals. 66 comes in. Well, the little BMW hasn't missed a trick all day so far, and we're half distance in the 12-hour at Hampton Downs as Bruce Stewart, Andrew Buiston, Matthew O'Donnell combination comes in for what would be a scheduled pit stop. of the safety car and a few of the uh, strategies that we were given earlier on not playing out the, um, the fuel stops and the tyre stops a bit hard to keep track of this is a battle for pride more than anything else because the VIP Pet Foods car has got a substantial lead but the other Australian Porsche certainly uh, wanting to make them work for it and that's what they're doing at the moment so car number 29 Tony Quinn Clark Quinn and Stefan Webling Stefan Webling at the wheel leading Now, have you seen a bit of development here? Because I think we've got now the uh, second Australian Porsche of Niall and Harvey maybe into second place. We'll check on that with the official lap scorers. It certainly looks that way at the moment. This looks like a scheduled stop for Dennis Roderick, Dave Blasson and Aaron Harris. Just being sure to observe the pit lane speed as they come down. Again, no real urgency. So maybe a driver change, a fuel, maybe tyres as well. Well, Dave Glasson brings in the car number 68. This is a standard regulation pit stop. Dennis Roderick standing there ready to get in the car. And car 54 goes out of the pits. They've done the fuel pump change on that car. Anyway, Dave Glasson bought this car in a good drive by him because he only bought this car and it was second place. So Dennis gets in the car. Like I said, this is a regulation stop. Just fuel and tyres, and they're back out on the racetrack. Dennis Roderick getting manhandled into the cockpit of the Porsche as we go back to the race leader, Stefan Webling, doing the job for Clark and Tony Quinn, the VIP Pet Foods 997 RSR. Just rounding up car number 68, and that's Dennis Roderick. And probably Dennis has got to get a little bit more accomplished to the car. It takes a few laps to get reacquainted with things, get the tyres up to uh, temperature once again. The ride here with Webling. This is Andre Heimgartner and Phil Hood. We believe it's Phil Hood at the wheel. Now, is this a scheduled stop? They had that miscue with the fuel earlier on, so they're into the pits. As we track triple seven, Lindsay and Dave Goodwin alternator problems early on, but they are well in contention now. Laps down on the leader, but still out there. Doing more than making up the numbers. As I said, this combination, veteran of many, many years of the now no longer raced Auckland six hour from Pukekohe Park Raceway. Latterly in this car and before that in an older model RX-7. The Mazda stalwarts through and through. 